We are Jacob and Anna White. We are carpenters from Alaska. We've helped millions of people build their own furniture through our plans and website. But now, we are going beyond that. We are going to show you how to build yourself a house, tiny style. In this video series, we'll show you step by step how to go from a trailer to a beautiful finished home. Make sure you subscribe and follow along. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video last week on roof framing. This week I thought we'd be doing a video on the tin, but obviously my wife had different plans in building a shed in the front for all of the stuff. Yeah, I just really wanted to get that out of the way. So we are going to talk in this video about how we built this little shed on the end of the tiny house. But before we get to that, we wanted to answer one really big question that one of you had in one of our blog posts, and that was, what kind of truck do I need to pull this tiny house? So I'll let Mr. Truck Expert here explain that. The tiny house itself is going to weigh between 8,000 and 12,000. It's kind of what we're rough estimating. She has an F-150 Ford with a 3.5 in it. I'm pretty sure that thing would tow it down the road just fine. Now, if you're towing this a lot, you're definitely going to want to go into the market of a three-quarter ton pickup. Ford, Chevy, Dodge, they'll all be fine. This week, we're going to frame up and finish out a little shed area on the front of this tiny house. When I first came to Jacob and said, I really think we should add some exterior storage onto the tiny house, <laughs> he was like, man, I don't want this tiny house to be any bigger than it has to be. So what we came up with was the idea of to put a little bit of space, a shed area. It wasn't so little. It maximizes where you can put stuff. So like generator, yeah. fishing poles, tools, um, if you ever wanted a battery bank. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's endless of things you can store in there, but it's also like exterior storage. It's like, kind of like a garage attached to your house without the garage. I like it. <laughs> a garage on your tiny house. The design is really simple. It's just the frames that we build up, screw to the studs in the wall for structure, throw some shelving on it, put plywood sides on it, then add a frame for the door to the front, which also adds some structure to the front, and put some doors inside. It'll get the same roof treatment as the rest of the tiny house. So it's pretty simple. This one was really easy to frame. We just made up these five different sections, which are basically like little mini walls. And I made five of them so that they could tie into the five studs on that back wall. You could have probably got away with three. I just tend to do things overkill and in three would have saved you some weight. Definitely screw these together and, and glue them together. So I plywooded the two ends. We really regretted doing that later because I couldn't fit the shelving in. <laughs> so we had to cut, you know, the shelving. It was a bad idea. So definitely leave the plywood off, take your five frames, put a cleat up at the base of where the frames go and then you just set those frames up on the cleat, screw them directly into a stud in the wall, and then you'll want to put your shelving in and then apply with the ends. And then from there, what you're going to do is add a 2x6 along the top to tie the frames in along the top and then a 2x4 along the bottom to tie the frames in along the bottom. And then for the door area, what we'll do is we'll add some vertical 2x to kind of separate out the door areas and give us something to attach our hinges to. So on the uh, top of the shed, just basically apply with it and that uh just nailed it down with some two and three spring shank nails and then it'll be ready for roofing. For the doors, I really wanted a wood look to bring some of that wood element in the siding. So what we did was we decided to use leftover tongue groove that you'll see us use in the interior of the tiny house. And we just cut a bunch of those tongue groove pieces, nine to be specific, to the inside length of the door area minus Happening. I had to cut 18 of them the same exact length. So what I did here is I've got a stand on my miter saw and I set it and just come down and butt this up. I like to do it on my right hand side because that's the side that I tend to hold because I'm right handed. Without doing any measuring or anything it's a perfect cut. Yeah, so I mean it was basically just uh, some tongue groove makes it look really nice on the outside and then uh, some cross bracing on the front. So to attach the cross bracing onto the doors and basically glued them on and we put it on with some uh, quarter inch uh, crown staples that were inch and a quarter long. 
The one problem we have is we picked up these hinges. They're like a really big gate hinge. And the problem is, is that the hinge would be inset in the door and then this would stick out. So our solution is to put some blocking like that and that. And then the hinge can sit on top of that. So then I'm just gonna do that right now. Jacob had a really good idea. He's like, let's just go ahead and put the hinges on the door while it's on the saw horse. It's a lot easier. So we did that. And then it was just a matter of bringing the door over, putting in the opening, um, using some shims to make sure our gap was even. We want to keep a pretty good sized gap. So we some shims on the bottom. We already attached the hinges, so it's just a matter of screwing it on. It was really fast and easy to put those hinges on. All along I was really worried, like, is this thing going to be strong enough? Because we basically just took a shed and screwed it to the back of the tiny house. I was actually really worried and I had a contingency plan to add some cross bracing underneath. But after we built it, we jumped on it a couple times to make sure it was sturdy and it was. And then at that point we started using it as built-in scaffolding to you know, do the upper roof and hang the, put the windows in. So this stuff is just a uh, transparent wood stay for exterior. It doesn't need a sealant or anything. You just reapply it every five years or so depending on how much sun it gets. I really like how it adds that rustic touch. It just looks really beautiful, especially since our siding is going to be so clean and modern and simple. And this is the, the ticket. Remind me next time I do this, Stain the doors when they're on the sawhorses, not hung, okay? I'm gonna add some little latches to the bottoms and tops of these to keep these doors shut. I chose this brass color because I think it blends really nice with the uh, wood. Now we wanna use it, we can just open this up and pull it open. That's one project done, so we are actually officially completely finished with the first thing on this tiny house. It feels really good. Alright, so thanks for watching and um, tune in next week and we'll have another video for you on the tiny house. We'll see you then! Oh, come on. No. Okay, so we got one. <laughs> this thing is built like... It's, it's very strong. This thing is very strong. <laughs> yeah. My beach ball. I mean, <laughs> beach well, ball? Gonna, I think this is a work trailer. Uh, I'm gonna have to Where's my it beach ball? Out. It's this big? Or maybe it's this big? It oh. went that way? <laughs> Sorry. You want to say something? Yeah, that looks good. Thank really good. Thank you.